good. It's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Definitely. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this. This is great. Yeah, I'm really excited <laughs> for you to be here and share all your knowledge and expertise on blood sugar. And um, yeah, and then we can relate it back to food sensitivities as well and and how that can how it can impact how the how blood sugar impacts food sensitivities and how um, that hormonal imbalance can impact it to you and I can chip in on that as well but um, first let me introduce Jennifer a little bit so and myself I'm Leah Vong I'm a holistic health coach and for those of you who who don't know me I am I specialize in working with women with food sensitivities and who have chronic digestive issues and then Jennifer is also a holistic certified health and wellness coach, and she's a nutritionist. And her specialty is working with women who have, um, who are overcoming sugar addiction as well as blood sugar issues. So this is what she focuses on. I'm so happy to have her here today and um, sharing this with us. So yeah, do you want to jump into maybe telling us a little bit more about you and what you do? I know that's a little snapshot that I just gave, but yeah, so yeah, so I, um, I um, have, I've had my own I've issue my own with issue. sugar addiction and um, pre-diabetes, gestational diabetes. So, um, you know, I, I always had a passion for nutrition and, and, you know, just learning about it and knowing about it. But um, when that happened to me about five years ago, it really, um, it gave me even more of a drive to want to help people with this because I went through it myself mm -hmm. and um, I knew there was other people out there struggling like I was, you know, and I had tried so many times to try to overcome my sugar addiction because I knew that it was going to lead to health issues and I could never, I tried so many times and I could never, um, figure out what worked for me. And then about five years ago, I, um, I did when I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes, I pretty much had to figure out how to fix this, how to get over this because it was not only affecting me, but also my daughter that I was pregnant with. So um, I did a lot of learning and research and everything and, and figured out uh, what I needed to do. And, um, you know, after that experience, that's when I really wanted to become a health coach and help people in this way. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I also, not only do I help people with sugar addiction, but I also um, consider myself an expert in diabetes, all things diabetes. So I help a lot of people with that. Um, and if you can't tell, I am from the South. And, I, um, and we have a lot of diabetes in the South. And so, you know, that's really where my passion is because I see it so much, you know, where I live. Um, there's so many diabetics. So uh, yeah. anyway, yeah. that's, that's, that's really amazing. what I love to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. I really love that. And I love that you've turned your story into a way of helping people in your experience. I think that's true for so many of us who become health coaches is that we have our own health struggles and working through that, all the trials and error and um, just really the process of figuring out so often inspires us to, to work with other people and to share that knowledge because it is so complicated to put together what really works and our medical system isn't necessarily set up to help people work through these food and lifestyle changes that, that we can help people with. And really there's so much power in that. I know with, with what I know of balancing blood sugar and how it impacts us doing it through food is such a, um, a powerful way to do it mm -hmm. and really to overcome those, overcome those challenges. So do you want to tell us a little bit about maybe why it's so important to overcome these? The Why, I guess, how, um, 
blood sugar really impacts our health. And, you know, I know a lot of people are probably familiar with diabetes or know somebody who, who has it, but don't necessarily understand um, why it's so important to overcome these challenges to stay healthy and to really live a long and high quality life. Um, yeah. You want to go into that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, definitely. Um, so when your blood sugar is constantly up, so when you're eating foods that constantly keep your blood sugar at a higher level, that can do damage to so many areas of your body. So um, it can definitely damage your kidneys. Um, when your blood sugar is always high over time, you know, your, your body has to work really hard to um, get that sugar out of your body, out of your blood. And your kidneys have to work really hard to do that. So if you're constantly giving it sugar and um, like processed carbs and your, your, um, your blood sugar is constantly high, then you know, your kidneys have to work hard all the time. And that's where um, kidney damage comes in, you know, and uh, kidney disease. So that's one thing. And then like, it can do damage to so many things like um, your eyes. Um, you can have really dry skin because your body needs water um, to pull that blood sugar out of your bloodstream. And so if you notice, like, um, if you have real dry, like heels, like cracked heels or like cracked lips, um, that could be a sign that your, um, blood sugar is high all, you know, a lot. And another thing is like, you can have food sensitivities, um, like digestive problems, uh, you know, you can start having like a nauseous feeling or like reflux, um, things like that, um, cramps, vomiting, stuff like that. Um, and that could be a sign that you have constant high, uh, blood sugar. So there's just so many things that, um, you know, that high blood sugar can cause. So we really need to pay attention to those things when we start noticing changes like that. So does that, uh, for sure. does that help? That's super helpful. And I think, you know, as you're talking about the kidneys, I think a lot about supporting our detox pathways in the work that I do with food sensitivities, because if those toxins are building up in our body, you know, whether it's the kidney being, the kidneys being backed up, we're not utilizing our water, like you're saying, we're not hydrated, um, not utilizing that or able to, to cleanse the fluids, you know, our lymphatic fluids and things like that. We don't get the toxins out of our body and those toxins really build up in the gut, but also throughout the whole body and they wreak havoc. So I work a lot with people to support their detox pathways. And, you know, that includes the liver, the kidney, the colon, the lymphatic system, all of those things, but the kidney is a big part of that. So as you're talking about the kidney, I'm really thinking about that because those toxins can create extra damage to the intestinal lining, which creates more things getting into the bloodstream. And that's a direct method of getting, um, of acquiring new food sensitivities mm -hmm. because the immune system then responds to those things that aren't supposed to be in the bloodstream. And, you know, it also upsets the microbial balance, the balance between the good and bad bacteria in our gut. Yeah. toxins really they they block receptors to uptake minerals and nutrients and things like that so if our um if blood sugar is impacting the way our kidney functions then we have to think about all of the upstream and secondary effects i think of what happens with those things that aren't being processed out and eliminated from the body definitely yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. i mean you it can like if you have pre-diabetes or high blood sugar, um, insulin resistance, that, that can be reversed. And so can, um, you know, your digestive issues and your food sensitivities, like, um, and like you said, Leah, you know, if you can, um, 
like get your blood sugar down and um, start doing things to, to detoxify your system, your body, yeah. then all this stuff, all these issues can go away. Now it does take time, right. but yeah. it can definitely, um, you know, go away. It can, we can be reversed. So yeah. And with that commitment to, to making it happen, you know, it's, and then having the know-how and the tools, right? Cause that's such a big thing. I, I hear from people all the time and pretty much all of my clients that I, that I work with, they don't know what to do to, to um, move past these challenges. So just really, um, I'm excited. I know we're going to get into some tips, some useful <laughs> things today for really balancing blood sugar. But before we do that, I'd love to talk, we're kind of talking about the high blood sugar side of things. I know a lot of people with food sensitivities also struggle with that low blood sugar crashing. So I'd love to talk about that a little bit. And, um, you know, I know from my perspective, it, it has a lot to do with the hormonal balance. So like when your blood sugar crashes, your cortisol, your stress hormones go up, we go into a state of fight or flight because our bodies don't know when they're going to get that next sugar fix, which we really need to survive. Mm -hmm. And it's not a sugar fix like loading on a bunch of sugary foods. We need sustained sugar to function, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that, but that's what I think about is the hormonal balance. And when one of the hormones is off, so say your insulin is really imbalanced, mm -hmm. it can impact your cortisol, but then it can also impact your, your um, reproductive hormones like estrogen and things like that. Um, having gut dysfunction and not clearing estrogen and those extra toxins can they, that all comes into it as well. You can build up estrogen in your in your system or have an imbalance with estrogen and testosterone, um, and it goes even further than that, where your thyroid can be impacted both by food sensitivities but also by this hormonal imbalance. So I think a lot of times we kind of just get ourselves into this. Um, super unintentionally, but we end up in this place where it's like all these things feel like they're not working. They're not functioning properly. And we come to a place where it's like, I just feel like I'm a mess. Like I remember being there, you know, it's like, why are my hormones not working? I've got ongoing food sensitivities. I'm struggling with symptoms every day. My mood sucks. I'm like, you know, all these things happen. And I really like to encourage people too that as we support these things, that um, so much changes and evolves and you're supporting your whole body and these things, even though they can all come out of whack because of one another, they can also come back into balance because of one another. So um, that's the piece I think about, but I'm sure you have some amazing thoughts on low blood sugar as well yeah. and what's happening with those, those crashes. Well, a lot of times low blood sugar, um, can be from maybe you're taking on taking in too many carbs at one time or yeah. some like you said Leah something that you're um, some food that your body is sensitive to and that can cause um, you know like a low blood sugar um, your body doesn't like that food or your body um, a lot of times you can have low blood sugar after you have the high blood sugar, you know, right. so you yeah. can eat, eat something and then your blood sugar goes up real high and then it goes, it crashes because you're, you're just giving it carbs, but you're not giving it like fiber or protein or fat with that. And that can cause a big spike like this and then a real low dip. And so if you're doing that all day long, you're on a roller coaster. So that's um, a lot of times what happens with the real low blood sugar. You're on that roller coaster mm -hmm. of high and low. And so, you know, you want to eat in a way that keeps your blood sugar kind of when you eat like this, like just a, you know, like a soft wave, not a big dip yeah. in high like that. So that's kind of the goal when you eat, you don't want your blood sugar to, to go too high or too low. You want to kind of keep it at this even, you know, 
wave. So I love that. And I think that's so helpful for people to understand because I know for um, my son struggles with low blood sugar. I was talking to you and and getting some ideas from you about that recently because it's something we haven't been able to balance. He's eight and it's so difficult to work with um, diets. I mean, he eats pretty healthy, but some days he has oatmeal for breakfast. And I'm super curious, are those the days that he really crashes? And we've tried to pair protein with it, you know, but we're, we're still working. We're still working on it. Mm -hmm. He's, um, but I know when he goes into those low blood sugar places, his body feels so unsettled. I can see him go into that fight or flight state. And, you know, when we're in that state coming back again to food sensitivities, we cannot digest our food. We can't get into a relaxed state, you know, and we're supposed to be able to come in and out of a relaxed state. And for a lot of people with food sensitivities there, we also struggle with anxiety. That's true for a lot of people that I talk with and a lot of people in the group. And, um, you know, we just kind of stay in that heightened state a lot. And it's really important to be able to come back down. So blood sugar is one other thing to think about with that because I know for him he gets into a place where he will say and do things that he doesn't normally say and do um, and gets into a kind of a really irrational state of mind he definitely gets hangry and you know something will trigger him and he'll go into a full-on meltdown where if um, he is well fed it's so much less likely for that to happen so you know I can see with him and of course it's extreme with an eight-year-old but I know my sister has these same challenges and I've seen I experience it a little bit myself or have in the past but for her she really tanks and um, afterwards she'll be shaky and so um, I guess I just want to say if you're if you're noticing that in your own life those are signs of low blood sugar and like Jennifer said you're probably also so having those high blood sugar spikes and going through this roller coaster. So being mindful of the things that you're eating. And maybe this is a great segue into your tips, because I know you have some tips around food that can help people kind of keep that more even wave. Yes, yes. So my first tip is to watch your carb intake. So you know, carbs are, are needed. We need carbs, but we don't need the processed, you know, um, processed carbs, the added sugar. We need the more natural carbs, you know, the Mm -hmm. fruits and sweet potatoes and beans and things like that, that we're going to get nutrients from. You know, we're going to get what our body needs, not the empty calories and, um, you know, it's really just empty calories from the processed food and and sugars. Um, That's not, there's nothing in that that our body needs. It's literally just energy, just um, sugar. And that's what starts causing this this high blood sugar and a lot of um, hormonal imbalance. So, you know, watch your carb intake. And something that I always suggest to my clients is get a blood sugar monitor, you know, start testing it when you eat. See, try, start trying to figure out what foods are causing you these issues, you know, like what foods are you sensitive to? What, what foods are causing you to have this high blood sugar or this low blood sugar? Um, you know, you can get a blood sugar monitor for $20, $30 over the counter. And so that's one thing that I always suggest that people do um, because it, it's a real eye opener you know, when you can see how food, you know, affects you like that. So that's my first tip. (laughs) I love that. And I love that that's something that people can do on their own because I've experienced with my son as well. We've taken him in and had blood sugar tests, but if it's not in the right moment, we, we weren't really gaining anything from it. We didn't, um, his doctor didn't draw any conclusions about it because his glucose came back fine or whatever the tests were that they did to look at his blood sugar, they came back fine. So I love that that's something that you can do pretty inexpensively at home and really kind of start taking control of, of monitoring, monitoring your, it yourself. Cause yeah. right. We're, yeah. the only, we're the only ones with us all the time. So yeah. no one else can do 
that on an ongoing basis. Yeah, and if you get that blood sugar monitor and you, you know, it has a log in it, so you can go back through it. And That's if you great. are at the doctor, you can show them, yes, I know every time I come here, you know, my blood sugar is fine, but look at, look at it when I, after I eat, you know, what is, what is going on? You can show your doctor, this is what it is um, when I'm at home and when I'm eating and stuff. So um, that's just uh, one thing that I always suggest. Yeah, that's great. But um, so the next uh, suggestion I have is obviously to reduce your sugar intake. Um, again, you know, added sugar, um, I mean, I'm not saying to never have sugar, never have a treat or added sugar, like, you can't live your life like that, but um, if you are having issues like um, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, or um, hormonal issues, then that's something that you need to think about, you know, um, lowering your sugar intake. And again, I'm not saying that you can't ever have it, but, you know, just uh, reduce it and start trying to eat more natural sugar, like fruits and um, sweet potatoes. And like, there's even like sugar in, you know, carrots and uh, sweet peppers and things like that, that you can have that, um, you know, are kind of sweet, but uh they're not full of like added sugar. So um, that's great. And I love those foods too can help crave uh, or help um, curb cravings for sugar. So that can be really helpful if you're adding those foods in as you're trying to take other foods out and you're feeling kind of, you know, with refined sugar, I know we go through kind of like a withdrawal process. And I think that happens with some of the more natural like maple syrup and honey. And when your body's used to having that um in your system i noticed that for myself anyway the more i eat it the more i'm like okay i want more of that so as you're going through that process it can be really helpful to um add in those more complex carbs like fruits and sweet potatoes and winter squashes and carrots and things like that and then it can help kind of fulfill that sweet craving to some extent so if you can do that kind of proactively you may not crave as much as well. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the third tip I have is um, to exercise to control your blood sugar. So that's one of the, um, the most effective ways when, um, when you feel like your blood sugar is out of control. Go on a walk. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one thing I teach diabetics all the time is um, after you eat, go on a 10 minute walk, do something active after you eat, because that's the best way to get your blood sugar back to a normal level after, you know, mm -hmm. after you eat. So, um, and exercise is good for so many other things too. So, you know, stress and just, you know, being more healthy and, um, feeling better and your mood and everything. So that's, that's one of the um, best things you can do for blood sugar. I love that that's kind of like an in the moment thing too. If you're noticing that you're, um, that you have eaten too much sugar, you notice your symptoms of your blood sugar kind of being high and you're starting to, you know, you're feeling unsettled in your body. Like, I think that's so useful to have something you can do in that moment to actually come back to a better place. And I think the more you do that too, it really gets that awareness in our brain and our body, you know, that this is what happens. We're kind of putting together those pieces a little bit more and then it can help more with the preventative stuff later. But mm -hmm. so you, I don't know if there's other things you can do in that moment, like if water helps or if, are there any other tips that can, um, well, okay. My next tip, <laughs> yeah. next my next tip <laughs> is drink more water. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, like I said earlier, water, um, when your body is dehydrated, it can throw off your blood sugar. It can throw off your hormones. So it's very important to um, stay hydrated. And especially with just good old water, you know, you don't need 
uh, soda and all the other drinks out there, um, water is just the best thing. Um, and uh, like I said earlier, water, if you're dehydrated, um, you know, it, it really, um, it really affects your whole body and your body needs water to, to function and to, to get blood sugar out of your, um, you know, bloodstream and all of that. So, um, that's one of the best things you can do for your blood sugar, your hormones and everything. Just make sure you are, um, drinking enough water. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's too, it really supports the kidney too. It's essential to have good, clean, um, you know, preferably filtered water. And then you're really like flushing those, flushing what needs to come out of your body out, including it sounds like the insulin and, and these different things that, that, um, that the kidneys help to process out. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm glad you said filtered water because that is, I should have mentioned that, um, you know, use your water filters. I have one on my refrigerator. I have one in my coffee maker, you know, like use them. Don't let them, you know, if you need to get those refills and stuff to, to have your, you know, water filtered, that is very good because there's lots of things in our water that can make things even worse. So mm -hmm. having that filtered water is really good. Yeah. Um, yeah that's great. Yeah, so the last uh, tip I have is reduce stress. Mm. Um, so, you know, when we're stressed out, that um, throws off everything. Um, it puts you in that uh, fight or flight. And when you're constantly stressed out, I mean, your blood sugar can be high. It can be low if you suffer from that. Like, again, um, it can throw off your hormones. And it's just not healthy for us to be in a constant state of stress. So you want to find ways to, um, I mean, we live in a stressful world. You know, stress is inevitable. We, we are going to have stress, <laughs> but you don't need to just ignore that. Like when you're stressed out, you need to figure out, um, you know, ways of uh, dealing with it whether it's meditation, yoga, deep breathing, um, anything to calm you down and relax you, you need that. I mean, 10 minutes a day is really all you need, but you know, you have to be consistent with it. You can't just do it, you know, once a month and, you know, think that that's going to help. I mean, it may help a little, but you really need to be consistent with it daily. Um, have a, have a daily, um, routine that where you can do something to reduce your stress and that's going to help your blood sugar and help your hormones like so much and your food sensitivities because yeah. there's so much that comes along with um stress and the gut you know it stress just it impacts the vagus nerve that gut brain yeah. connection certainly increases anxiety it, damages the intestinal lining. There are so many reasons why we need to consistently work on de-stressing. And I love that you're pointing out consistently. Um, one of the things that I think is the easiest for my clients to do and for most people to do is if you can get into a habit of doing that deep breathing throughout the day, you know, so if you're really busy and you don't feel like you have a lot of time to sit you know, to sit in the morning for your morning routine or in the afternoon, at the very least, just taking a few deep breaths throughout the day a couple of times, you can incorporate that if you're doing dishes, if you're at work, if you're driving. And I think that that ongoing, you know, even if you do a med meditation in the morning, including that through the day to just kind of keep bringing us back into our bodies and helping to kind of bring the, um, to bring us down a little bit and, and, um, and really calm us down is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So great. Well, thank you for all of those. I mean, they're all such practical, useful things that people can kind of start doing right now. And um, I know you mentioned to me at one point too having protein 
if you're going to eat carbohydrates, is that something people could, should consider if, you know, they are having these crashes, but they still want to include rice or oatmeal or things like that mm -hmm. into, their, into their breakfast or into their day? Definitely. Like, um, that, that's one thing I teach, um, to my clients is, um, if you're going to have those kind of things, you know, um, like rice, oatmeal, things like that are high on the glycemic index. And so when you eat those kind of things, you really do need like protein or fat, um, something like that to, um, kind of keep your, it won't, it'll help to, um, keep your blood sugar more even and not um, spike it so much. So yeah. if you're just eating the carb, then your blood sugar is going to spike more than if you um, ate like protein or fat with it, it won't spike mm -hmm. as much. So it'll keep, keep it more even and, um, you know, help you not to have those really high blood sugars or really low blood sugars. So that is yeah. a, that is something to consider, you know, when you, if you're having an issue. Yeah, that's great. And I, I think just all of those things are so useful and things that we can do. You know, my, my, I know I need to work on this with my son again. We've kind of taken breaks in between, but, you know, just including more protein. Since we talked the other day, I've started doing that already. And we are going to get a blood sugar monitor because it's pretty drastic for him. And we really haven't gotten anywhere with the explorations we've done with his, with the doctors. So um, I think we're just going to need to get that and have it at home. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, those are awesome. And I really appreciate you sharing and, you know, providing something so practical and useful for people too, that they can kind of start with right now if they're struggling with these things. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and Jennifer and I are happy to answer those. Mm -hmm. And um, also I want to say, if you want more information about Jennifer and what she does, feel free to go to her website. It's Nutra. Let me see if I'm going to say it. <laughs> Nutraholic.com. So it's N U T R I A H O L I C.com. Mm -hmm. And her name again is Jennifer Dunn. So you can look her up. She's also on um, Facebook and Instagram. And you can find Nutraholic um, Health Coaching there as well. Is that your tag? Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. That Nutraholic Health mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and of course, always feel free to reach out to me either personally, you can send me a personal message or in the group. Um, and I'm happy to receive emails as well. My email is Leah, leahvong.com. So yeah. yeah, we really appreciate you being here and sharing this with us. Thank it's you. something that so many people struggle with. Yeah. So. yeah. And I just want to say to your viewers, like, that's what me and Leah, you know, that's what we do. Like if you have tried this on your own, if you've tried to fix your issues on your own, like it may be time to, to get a health coach, you know, like that's what we specialize in because um, there's so many people that um, are, are suffering and, you know, you don't know what to do. And that's what we can do is help you figure these things out because you don't want to just push these issues under the rug you want to get to the root of the, your issues um and and like leah said doctors don't have the time they don't always have they don't always know exactly how to help you and that so that's what we do um so if you're needing support with that you can always reach out you know that's I, I want you to live the best life you can. I want you to feel good and and so does leah and um so that's our passion and that's what we love to help people with. So um, I just yeah. wanted to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, one of the things that's, that's the most common is we end up kind of going in circles when we're doing it on our own and having someone who can provide the knowledge and the resources, but also that reflection, it is such a turning point and such a game changer in so many people's journey. You know, there's some people who can just take out gluten or dairy and they feel really good when they do that. And that's great. They probably don't need to dive in further if it's that simple. But for a lot of us, there's so many, um, it's kind of a combination of underlying causes and we've got to get to those or it's just going to be this continuous cycle. So like Jennifer said, that's 
that's what we specialize in is really helping people get to the underlying causes that, so that you can go on to live and enjoy your life and the things that you love in life instead of focusing so much on your health. I know I wish I'd reached out for support way before I did, but that was just my journey. I needed to do all that learning on my own, I think, and it brought me to where I am today. But I really um, encourage people to get support and find the right kind of support for you as soon as possible because it really is a game changer and can set you on a completely different path. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes for Jennifer and I, our clients are seeing changes within the first week or two. Mm -hmm. As soon as we start making, I mean, definitely seeing changes, but big changes and transformation within that time. So, um, yeah, I just want to encourage you that you don't have to keep feeling stuck and you really deserve to feel good and be able to enjoy your life. And there are ways to get there. So yes, definitely. <laughs> well, thank you again for being here, Jennifer. And thank you to everyone for joining us. Reach out if you need anything and we'll just see you next time in the, in the next video. All right. Bye. All right. Bye everyone. <laughs>